hood dry let's get it glued into place so get in a nice bit of super glue just on the underside at the back just at the front and then we just want to come in and line it up as best as we can as straight and as nice as you possibly get can get it we don't want it to be kind of off at an angle or something or sort of nice oh there we go I've knocked it again no worries let's get a little bit more of that super glue on there not really having much luck with super glue at the moment but anyway let's get that back on line it up you know if you can use recessed panel lines or rivets to kind of find the center use them you know get the eyeball at it look at it from different angles line it up as best as you can as even as you can hopefully that's looking good get your head down to the tables also a good way of doing this looking good turn it around right that's looking rather good now hopefully as you can see so then what we want to do we want to do our hood prop now what I've already done off camera is I've already gone off and I've um, I've taken what I've used before in the past for scratch building nice bit of fused wire just using the 10 amp one um, you know cut it off straighten it up and I've sprayed it the um, the RLM 02 and what we want to do now is we want to you know cut this up nicely but get it at the right length so starting off with um, a kind of a, an extended sort of estimated cut so let's just cut this one end we had it attached to our um, tweezers there let's just cut it in half right and then getting our tweezers the ones with the uh, Tamiya masking tape on why not we then need to kind of sort of see how much we need now I think clearly we could cut quite a bit off of that you probably can't see it on camera because it is quite a thin wire let's just pick that up again now where you want it to start is see this little circle there I'm just kind of pointing at it you want it to start there and then you want it to hook up to um, the top of the hood so actually it's just actually around about where the tweezers are at the top there so let's try that again yeah, we need to cut off a little bit more and but just keep cutting off a bit more and a bit more at a time you know it's better to um, it's it's easier to cut off more than it is to actually start putting it back so hopefully as you can see cut off a little bit more and just keep doing it till you've got let's just try and knock that out Well, that has got lost in the engine somewhere <laughs> so hold on I'll cut back when I've got it out well after completely losing my hood prop I've had to go off and make a new one um, but as I say you know cut it down keep cutting it till it fits but cut it slowly so that we don't have to, well have, you can't exactly add any more rod so you'd have to make a new one so just dip in the one end into our little bit of super glue that we've just got going on here what we can simply do then is starting from the bottom right just sorry you're off camera just where our little circle bit is here that's where we want it to start and there we go just like that that's nicely in there get in our um, cotton wool bud and a bit of super glue on one end if I've got any left on the mat and we can just nicely just at the top put a nice little bit of super glue just at the top there and hopefully as you can agree that is looking rather nice with our little um, hood props going on there same 
going on the other side as well nice little hood prop going on there and I personally think that is looking a lot better than um, what the instructions kind of want you to do which is um, you know have that as all one piece and just plonk it on the side randomly somewhere I think that just looks um, a lot nicer um, so that is the um, the engine section right one of the last things we're gonna do now um, with this build is our um, navigation lights and what we're gonna do there's these little tiny little bumps on both sides kind of hard to see Right, those are your indicator, uh, your navigation lights. Now, um, just painting them green uh, and red is, you know, it's okay. But what we can do, we can actually start by just cutting them off, just like so, making them nice and flat, just like that. Cut them off. Right, we can go off. Um, I do believe it's green on this side. Right, we, I'm going, I like to use um, Citadel paints for the painting and um, just finding the paintbrush. One colour that I do like is um, Warp Stone Glow for the green. And for the red, I like um, Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, nice red there. Nicely used for painting up Blood Angels. And what we can do is right where we cut off that tiny little raised bit, what we want to do is just put a quick tiny little blob of green now nothing big or anything like that. want to keep it nice and tiny and then we just need to let that dry and I'll show you the next bit Right, coming back I'm going to show you the red side now for putting on the next bit hopefully as you can see cut off nice bit of a red dot there what we're going to do is for this one I'm going to be using a formula um, 560 um, world's best canopy glue apparently from what they're advertising I find that it doesn't really matter which canopy glue you use they're all basically the same um, which is basically PVA glue there's probably something a little bit more in there that kind of makes it more kind of crystal clear but just put it on a, on a little um, kind of any kind of tray any kind of scrap something right and then what we want to do want to get a nice little toothpick all right and what we want to do we want to try and just put the tiniest little blob right where our indicator navigation light is very carefully just like that and there you go you got that nice little blob right there and when that dries it'll be crystal crystal clear and so it'll look like you know a nice bit of glass we've got that painted on um, green and red bits which you know when you kind of look through this um, glue it's going to make it look all nice and glossy and there we go we've got another nice little blob there they're going to look fantastic when they dry so there we go, we are all nice and finished with our BF109 by Edward 140 ape scale. Um, in all honesty, I am actually quite liking it. Um, as I seem to always do, I kind of get a little bit, ooh, sort of like halfway through, but in the end, you know, I do like the end result. Um, in all honesty as well, um, because I do a lot of commission work, uh, well, so, sorry, I used to do quite a lot of commission work in the past because of putting it in the post and everything. I would normally go off and I would, you know, close up canopies, close anything that is open and it all being kind of nice and closed because when you put them in the post, you know, propellers break off. Um, panels break off, canopies break off, so it is quite nice to actually go off and open things up, because um, somebody did mention on the forum about I don't open things up enough maybe, and you know what, it's right, it's just kind of a habit to close everything up, so it was nice to kind of go, right, let's just open things up, and I do like all that nice engine detail in there, um, I really do like the fact of not going off and sort of doing what Eddard makes you do, and just have your, your 
engine cowl there, one piece, take it off. I do like how I chopped it up into three different pieces. It just kind of makes it look like it's either been in flight or it's about to take off and they're just doing some quick kind of standard pre-flight checks or something like that. Just kind of quickly open it up, check fuel or uh, fuel, um, oil levels or whatever. So I, I do like that. Um, now remember this kit costs about £22.30 pence which is rather a nice price now um, compared to other bf 109s that i've done i've done the um, the airfix one now the airfix one fits together rather nicely um, but the decals with it sorry are absolute crap um, and the surface detail is just nowhere near as good as the surface detail you get with this kit so um, it is the best um, BF109 um, 148 scale that I've ever built and um, I think a lot of other people think it's the best that you can get as well which um, to be honest with you fit like a complete and utter dream and I just love the surface detail if we bring you in not too much hopefully what you can see um, you can see that those very fine um, bits of rivet detail um, that we had with this now the wash has gone perfect with it because I'm um, hopefully what you're seeing is the wash has gone into these tiny little recess um, rivets but because they're so tiny it's like the wash has gone in there but it's not gone in there so much that it's like really in your face it's just like a nice faint bit of weathering that just brings out those tiny little bits of detail and adds another level to it because if you look at the recessed panel lines um, they're quite nice sized and the wash has gone in there and that's coming out at yeah but those tiny little recessed rivets are just um, really you know next generation surface detail um, inside you can just probably see actually you can see quite nicely all that nice um, photo etch going in there which kind of livens it up the nice seat belts and everything um, nice little touch for out of the box as well so let's have a little, little quick look at our instructions and just kind of quickly um, you know give this a nice final conclusion um, the whole um, cockpit went together um, really really nice no real problems at all the photo etch was really nice to go in there no fit issues it really does kind of give it that bit more um, you know um, than the standard usual sort of stirring plastic that you get with most kits that that bit of extra photo etch really does bring it out nicely now the engine section we built that up we jazzed, jazzed it up a bit um, but when it came to actually put in the engine in um, and <clears throat> it went in nicely but if you wanted to go off and where it says to here we go um, to have the nose open you can put in these mgs and then somewhere down the line it does say uh, yeah, if you wanted to close the nose, um, you don't put in the MGs, and that's all they're saying to do. But with this kit, I was doing test fitting and everything, and the this engine top engine cowl just just does not um, fit in with some of the the parts that are you know with the engine. You have to have a trim at some of the parts or keep some of the parts out it's kind of like using your initiative you can't use instructions because they don't show you but you're going to have to do a bit of trimming or leaving parts out use your initiative um, you know test fit test fit if you want to close up that whole engine section so the instructions take a bit of a you know so we say a bit of a hit on that kind of area there but that was really the only niggle i had with this there's lots of nice detail it's a nice easy fit um but you've still got those nice little bit of extras that makes it a little bit more than just being nice and easy it just gives you that kind of ability to also have a nice easy kit but you can kind of really m make it a nice professional kit um, as i say i did um which markings did i do i did um these markings very nice markings but as you can see loads of nice markings there um, so there we go that is the BF 109 by Eddard cracking kit as I say I think it's probably the best you can get for 148 scale I haven't built them all um, but I've 
thoroughly enjoyed doing this and hopefully you've enjoyed um, watching the rapid video build um, because I have done one of these I, I did do another rapid video build um, it was of the airfix one so I wanted to keep this nice and rapid and just concentrate on those areas where you know the, the whole you know engine section bringing that out photo etch bits a bit of a fit issue here and there or whatever um, you know just kind of keeping it nice and interesting so if you've enjoyed that so until basically the next rapid or step-by-step -step video build here at Genesis Models. I hope you've enjoyed um, this build. My name is Bobby Waldron and this is Genesis Models.